Now, UV maps can be a hard concept to grasp, but it's actually a very simple idea. So we're going to sit back for a minute from our sword, and we're going to create a box and take a look with this box at exactly what a UV map is and what it does. So go ahead and come up here, click File, and if you have your project open from the previous video, go ahead and click File and save your scene so you don't lose your project because we need a new scene. And after you've saved your scene, go ahead and click File and select New Scene. All right. Once you have a new scene open, go ahead and just select the polygon cube, click it, and that's going to create our cube. Press R on your keyboard, scale it up, and then W and drag it up. Now what we're going to need in order to check out and understand UVs is we're going to need a UV testing texture. Now I would provide one on brainpoof.com, but the idea is that with UV testing textures, you have to pick one that you like. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into Google or Bing, whichever search provider you decide to go to, and come up here to the search box and just go ahead and type UV map texture. Now, if you have the ability to use search tools on the search provider that you chose to go with, click your search tools, drop it down, and select a large image. You want something like a 1024 by 1024 or a 2048 by 2048, a fairly HD image. The higher the resolution, the better the image is going to look and the more accurate you're going to be able to get your UV map. So I'm going to go ahead and go with this 2048 by 2048. I'm just, I'm just going to right click on it and I'm going to say view image and I'm going to zoom in so I get the full texture. I'm going to right click and I'm going to save the image as. I'm just going to go ahead and save this in the Maya Sword tutorial images folder. As you can see, I've already done this. So I'm going to select, I'm going to name it UV underscore testing and go ahead and click save. Then I'm going to go ahead and lower the browser and Back in Maya, what we're gonna do is we're gonna assign that texture to this box. So we're gonna right click on the box. We're gonna come down and we're gonna select assign new material. Now what we wanna do is we wanna use just an easy texture that we can look at and analyze without any special shading. So go ahead and select the Lambert. A Lambert is a very bland shape. There's really no specularity to it. It doesn't reflect a whole lot. It's a very plain shading map. So what we're gonna do is come over here into our attribute editor with the Lambert 2 that we just created. We're going to go to color. We're going to select this little checkered box next to color. This is going to create a render node window. And what we're going to do is we're going to select a file because our texture is a file. So select file. Then come over here to the file box. It'll be file attributes. You'll see image name and just click this little folder here. Browse to your Maya Sword Tutorial Images folder where we just saved our UV testing texture and click it and select open. Now you can see that it's not showing so you have to hit six on your keyboard to make it show because in order to see the texture you have to be in shaded display. So now we have our texture on our box. Now you can see this UV map on this box. This texture that we just got is being applied to this box perfectly. I mean, it's just a really nice one. Let me show you something else. If I select this box and I scale it down, that texture is uniform regardless of the size of the box. Just something to keep in mind, all right? Now let's go ahead and take a look at the actual UV texture. So go ahead and drag your box. Just hold down your middle mouse button, your Alt key, and just drag that box over to the left a little bit. Then come up here to Edit UVs and come down to the UV Texture Editor. This is going to open up this window. Go ahead and scale this window so it's not too intrusive and you can see your box still because we want to look at our box while we check this concept out. Then go ahead and click on your box. Immediately you'll notice there is the texture that we assigned to it. This is your UV map. You're probably noticing that I can see the box and you probably can't. So what you got to do to see the box is come up here and select Toggle Shaded UV Display and it'll shade your box a little bit. So now you can see it a lot better. Now, let's take a look at what's going on here real fast before I kind of explain what a UV texture is doing in this instance. Now, if we look right up here at these letters, we can see that there's a E, an F, a zero, and a one. Then we got F012. Now, if I right click on this and I select face, and I click it, this is our texture. Remember, this is a two-dimensional texture, and this is a 3D object. If I zoom in here, you can see EF01, F012, same as what's on this box. Now, how does this work? 
Well, what's happening here is this box is being laid out flat, almost like paper origami. And that's what a UV map is. It maps these faces to a two-dimensional surface. It unfolds your box like you would with paper origami. You know, origami, it's like you take a piece of paper and you fold it up and you make a dove and it flies out the window. Well, it doesn't do that, but eh, you get the idea. It's, it's folding out your 3D model onto a two-dimensional surface. So that way it can apply a texture to those faces because a texture is 2D and it's a 3D object. So the 3D, a texture cannot be made 3D, but a 3D object, you could take each one of these faces and lay them out flat. So for instance, if I were to right click on this object, go to vertex, select all the vertices real fast. And I were to go ahead and come up here to edit mesh. And I were to just go ahead and under vertex, select detach, then right click, select face and click on this face here and press W. Think about it. If I could lay every one of these out flat, if I were to do what I just did there and think about this, now it's on a flat piece of paper, just like this two dimensional texture. That's a UV map. That's what you're looking at. Now you'll notice no matter where I move this box, it stays the same. The EF01, F012 is not moving when I move the box here. But if I come over into the UV map, and I right click, I select face, and I click on this face, and I move it. Look at, you see what's happening? Wherever I move this box on this texture is where it's applying it to this 3D surface. And that's how it works. All that's happening here is we've laid our box out flat. It's basically taken all the faces of the box and laid them out completely flat, and then mapped them to a location on the texture. So this is just a location. It's saying that this face is going to be using this part of the texture as a whole. So if it's over here, then this face is going to use this part of the texture as a whole. And that's a UV map. That's all there is to it. But the thing here, now you're noticing that once we brought this box in, it already had a UV map to it. That UV map, if I were to come over here, hit Control-Z and put it back, this is actually a really good map. You know, this box, everywhere around, there's no distortion. Now that's because these faces that come default with these polygon primitives, they come pre-mapped. The problem is, is when you distort this, if I right click and I go to vertex, and I were to take, let's go ahead and take this polygon that we've already laid flat on the ground. I'm gonna grab one of the vertices. Watch what's happening when I move this. It's stretching everything. The texture looks terrible now. Why is that? That's because this is not stretched. Now let me select that same vertice over here and stretch it too to match this. See what's happening? I'm gonna hit Control Z. Now I wanna confuse you with that. The area that's being mapped has to match this. So if this is distorted and this is not distorted, then you get this. That's why when you're UV mapping, the faces have to match, right? So if I hit Control Z, now it matches. This box is pretty much the same shape as this face is because that's, that's the assignment. That'll make a lot more sense as we get in depth to it when we're UV mapping the sword in the next tutorial. Now there's a lot of processes and there's a lot of different methods that can be used to UV map. There's planar mapping, cylindrical mapping, spherical mapping, all kinds of different mappings. There's even automatic mapping where it'll map a very complex object out onto a two dimensional surface like what we have preset here with this polygon primitive. It'll do that with our sword. And that I think is the first route we're gonna take. We're gonna take a look at automatic mapping. That way we can play around and understand how to move around these faces inside of the UV texture editor to make them where we want. Like let's say this was the blade, the top part of the blade, and this was the bottom part of the blade. And we wanted to line those up so when we texture it, it's easier to texture. Well, we can do that. And we're gonna take a look at how to do that through first by automatic mapping, and then we're gonna move around and play around inside of the actual UV editor. If you have any questions or comments, please post below the video on brainpoof.com.